Hello and welcome back to Roads to Power. We are a little bit north of Constantinople right now, and we're not feeling too good. We're feeling a little ill. However, our health is fine, but that's because of a lot of temporary bonuses. So we have a comfort trapping and down to earth. I guess really it's down to two temporary bonuses, but that is very important because these will eventually wear off. Uh, let's just have a quick look here. So, if we scroll down, comfortable trappings, that's going to wear off in seven years. And then, down to earth, that's going to wear off in nine years. So, that does rather put a limit on our character if we assume that they're going to stay ill. Now, obviously, we should just get better and that would be fine. But this is going to be happening a lot. We are reaching the end of our character's lifespan. And, well, I think we're, we've, we've left our air in a good position. Our heir is fairly healthy. They've got okay stats. They're not maybe the best martial character, but they got a little bit. They could carry on these outlaws in the same direction if they wanted to. Or these swords for hire. And husband is pretty good. Reasonable stats. Has lustful. There's a good chance of grandchildren. I think, I think we've done a good job so far. But we haven't gone to Constantinople. And that is one thing that we need to fix. Because there's new events in Constantinople. And we want to see them. Uh, but before we do that, we should probably um, earn a little bit more money as well. Yeah, although we don't have anything immediately to spend on. Um, at least not in the men at arms section. Maybe there's something in our camp we could spend it on? Uh, we could buy an upgrade for... Oh, well, we've already got the upgrade for our baggage train. Okay. Already got the upgrade for supply ten and that and that. Okay, so we're buying a second level. So, this costs us 162. Does the second level cost less for other ones? Yeah. 108, and we're only allowed one upgrade at a time, at least from what we've seen previously. This allows us to increase the size of our men at arms. That's pretty good. I, I quite like increasing the size of our men at arms. This one allows us to have extra knights and another men at arms regiment. That could be really good if we went into a different area and got even more cultural stuff. Yeah, I think that could be interesting, actually. Hmm. Okay. Supply tent. Uh, I'm not too excited about the upgrade for that. That gets us, like, it's, they're good, but they're not exciting. And then baggage train. Allows us to increase the size of archer regiments. Uh, we do actually have an archer one. Um, these guys are archers. So actually increasing their size by three is pretty good because, um, we get a lot less of them by default. So, yeah, increasing that would be very good and it would give us a lot more siege progress, I think. Yeah, let's maybe have a look at doing that. So is that the Roaring Campfire? It is. Okay. Let's give us an extra knight and an extra men-at-arms regiment. Let me just confirm. Well, they all just changed, so I assume that means that's right. Yeah, we cannot upgrade because there is already an upgrade going. Uh, that makes sense. Okay, cool. So, now we've done that, let's maybe go and do a little transport mission and then head down to Constantinople. Okay, where do you want to go today? Um, you have a message you must carry to Melnikperin, which is where? Oh, okay. That's pretty easy. We're actually we're delivering it to the Count who we previously helped become independent. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll travel there. I don't know why I just cancelled the mission. Uh, do I still have it? I do. Wonderful. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to travel there. How do I... Have I broken it? By pressing escape, did I break it? Maybe I have to move my camp there now? Is there any way to go back? Nope. By pressing escape, I have broken it. Well, we are going to manually travel to Perrin, as apparently the game will not give me another way to travel there. Okay, well, that's fine. It's not too bad. Uh, I guess we could always abandon the mission if it doesn't work as well. Yeah, okay. So if you press escape at any time during that, it will just break it. Or break your ability to travel. Also, we look even worse than we did. Like, those eyes just look like we're already dead. Anyway, uh, that gets us 88 gold. Fantastic. And we get a hook, which we can now use to make ourselves uh, more money. Or, um, there we go. Let's go in here. Get some provisions. Yeah, I guess we can get some of the provisions back. Now, I assume we can't do anything with you because we've asked recently. Oh, we haven't asked recently enough, apparently. Okay. We need some more provisions. 
Although, I guess we didn't get anything with him because we never actually had the war. Yeah, that's true. Uh, stand with us. So, where is this? Um, any... Oh, it's over here? No, I don't really want to go to... Uh, yeah, I don't really want to go there right now. I, I think we can avoid that. Uh, right. Let's move our camp over to Constantinople. And I think we've been everywhere else on the way. Yeah, this is the only place nearby we haven't been, but... If we were to start heading down towards uh, Jerusalem way, then we would definitely want to go down by the coast to grab some of these. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Let's start moving our camp. Right. Okay, I was just double checking there wasn't a civil war that had just broken out, because uh, it showed everything as being independent, but that's fine. It's just showing us a breakdown of the realm because we've zoomed in enough. Cool. Anything else? We can use make request interaction. To arrange a marriage. Yeah, yeah, we had that before, but there's no reason to. Nice, we've arrived. We get 600 martial. We get 200 learning. We get trait experience. But we didn't get the travel event. We didn't get the event it said that we would get. Um, Because it claimed that we would get a sightseeing event. But I guess you only get that if you actually travel and you don't move your camp. I'm just grabbing Bellum Justum so we can move down to hit and run. I'm not really too worried about... um. This one, because this just lowers Cass's belly cost, and we never declare war, so. Um, okay. The Strategos is fed up with the Byzantine Emperor. Okay, so. You got 3,600. You're attacking Wallachia. You have some allies. So, Gascoigne is the ally over here that we saw previously. That's an internal one. Okay, so they got 3,000. They don't have as much money as they used to have, which is interesting. Who's wanting us to back this? These guys have 900 troops. Yeah, we run into the exact same issue we ran into last time. It's, it's a pure numbers game. They have a garrison of 3,800. If you add 2.5k to 900, you get 3,400 troops, which is not enough to siege. Therefore... Like, there's no point. Like, if we're taking our capital, and that means the war is going to take absolutely forever. So, yeah, let's not worry about that. How about an artifact delivery? Ooh, we don't do these very often. Okay, we got a lot of money for it. 152. Greetings, adventurer. Many are the roads of this world and treacherous. If you'll work for Obsidian, my liege would pay well for your expertise. His precious embellished dragon figurine shall be entrusted to you. Bring it to the Olaya uh, of Samara, where Caliph um, Abdallah sits, for the embellished dragon figurine is promised as a princely gift. Okay. So this is the Caliph of the Abbasid Empire. Wow, you're wanting me to go on a, like, a big trip, right? Yeah, you are wanting me to go on a big trip. Okay, well, I guess we're all going to go. We are going to be low, low on supplies when we get there. We cannot actually go to all these places on the way because it's going to cost us too many supplies. I could maybe go here on the way, but... Yeah, maybe that'll let me avoid the hills. Let me just do that first. Let's assume we're going to go to there first. It doesn't let you avoid the hills, huh? Okay. Is there anything I can do here? So we lowered our travel speed with Scout for Talon. I could maybe ditch that for now. Which might help us get there quicker. Although that doesn't actually help you with your provisions, apparently. In which case, I don't care. Yeah, leave that on. Um. Yeah. We could get mercenary guards or something, but... No, I think I'm happy to just go. If we run out of provisions, we run out of provisions. I think we'll be fine. I think we can always grab some on the way. Start traveling. Also, I wonder if you can stop your travel halfway through and keep the contract. I guess you probably should be able to, right? Oh, and you temporarily do get the figurine while you're traveling. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, I guess you could stop it midway through. We could test that. Yeah, that might be worth testing. Uh, let's wait till we get to the first thing. Hey, we're no longer ill. Wonderful. Uh, let's wait till we get to the first um, lifestyle experience one and then cancel the contract. Well, not cancel the contract, but cancel the travel. Right, so we've arrived here. I'm going to say, actually, you know what? Travel. 
I'm gonna abort the travel. Contract stays. Interesting. So you can stop to gather things. Okay. That's cool. Uh, let's go here first and see if there's any supplies here. 200 for 4,000 supplies. Um, I guess I'll pay the money here. Or actually, is there a time limit on this? Let, let, me, let me just check. Does this have a time limit on it? Doesn't say it has a time limit on it. Maybe we just hold a little uh, camp revelry. We, we have a little break, get some provisions. Okay. I'm gonna hold one here. We're not gonna invite anyone. We're, um, we can go for more of this though. I don't wanna exchange provisions for bonuses. Can't go for extra drinks. Okay, well that's fine then. Uh, let's start Camp Revelry. Nice, it immediately starts because we're all here, because we're all members of the camp. Makes sense to me. Roaring Campfire completed. Wonderful, so we can now get our men at arms uh, increased a little bit. I'm so deep in the conversation, I barely notice the lack of light. It's only when I have trouble identifying a newcomer to the chat that I spare a look in the fire. So we've had this one before. Archimbod here has uh, offered to go and look for things, but we could also just do it ourselves. Let's go do it ourselves. We're pretty good at uh, chopping down trees. It's one of our strengths. We've also swayed this guy. Is that guy now... Um, in, oh, we've got... This has actually changed. They were all supporters uh, last time we checked, but yes, the guy we're currently swaying has moved into the supporter column. So maybe sway Rodolfo, our son-in-law. Let's do that. Okay, cool. Love it. It's like you can go here to finish this. Yes, I definitely can. But um, I'm not. You know what we could do as well. We could take a contract with absolutely no intention of finishing it, just to see what happens. Right? They just take a contract and see how long it will leave it open. It's an idea. Yeah, we could definitely try that. Like, take uh, this contract and just do nothing. Although, no, that one makes you travel. It would have to be like a transport one, like another artifact delivery, and just deliberately never take, hand it in. Yeah, let's try that um, and see how that goes. Uh, anyway, hosting an activity. The Wandering Merchant. Ooh, okay, so we've got another merchant. What have they got? They got a fine sword. Which we don't need because we already have our dagger, right? Mm, yes, our dagger is actually very, very good. Even if it's a lower um, rarity tier. Do we need um, Yulia's um, Manual of Martial Arts? Probably not. I think we're also fine on that. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, be gone, opportunist. We'll be responsible with our money and gain more income because of that. Okay. A conversation in the hands. And that is why people who simply won't see reason are plain fools, my bodyguard Henri finishes as he takes another sip of his mug of Cretan Muscat. I'm intrigued by Henri's topic, but I hesitate when I overhear Karamel's monologue about how conquering your fears is the most important thing in life. Slightly stressed, I try to decide which conversation to pick up. Ah, so if I had nightly debates building, then I could t do both. Or, if I had the mass tent building, we could get a different bonus entirely. Hmm. Okay. Well, which one doesn't like me? They both love me. Well, you've been around longer, so let's uh, let's try and be friends, Henri. I think you've been around longer. I might be wrong, though. Time flies. That was a wonderful revelry, but we didn't get any provisions. It did reduce the cost of provisions, I suppose, which is nice, but it didn't give us any. Okay, uh, let's go here. Let's get ourselves the provisions. So now, these will cost a lot less. So yeah, that takes 100 off the cost. So that was definitely worth it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, head back. Uh, mingle with the locals, we'll hear a story. Let's get the lifestyle experience. We did. Fantastic. Who's for recruitment? We have Constantia. We have Artemios. And we have Comitas. 
It has been suggested, by the way, that we marry off all of our courtiers and get a bunch of children with us and all that sort of stuff. We could do that. But for now, I'm not that worried about it. I quite like the fact that our courtiers join, they leave, and, like, I think that's kind of a good cycle. I don't really want to build up a court filled, filled with people and I have to constantly manage that they're actually getting marriages, they're actually... I guess I don't need to do educations anymore because of... Well, wait, do we even have tutors? I just realized, do we even have a court tutor? Uh... No, because we don't have a court. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I, I guess where I would have to find educators for all the children. It just seems like a lot of extra work that's unnecessary for our current goal. For another character, maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe we'll have a camp full of people who we, um... Like, maybe we keep our camp smaller, but we keep it as uh, families and try and grow people into different positions. But for now, I'm not overly worried about it. By the way, have you noticed that all these characters have, like, insane stats? Um, like, when we do these events, there's always, like, one absolutely absurd stat. It is kind of odd. They're all bad, by the way, right now. I mean, apart from the fact that we could get a diplomacy person to let us do diplomacy contracts or something like that, but... That's not really what we're doing right now. Um, but yeah, they always have an insane stat that you just go, Oh, how did they get that? Okay, we have two people here. We have um, Chrysanthios, who is pretty good. And then we have Hectorius, who is not. Okay, how much do you want, Chrysanthios? 82? Yeah, you can join us. Okay. And then local grounds. Uh, I don't have 90. I don't really want to recruit this guy. I think that's fine. Okay, cool. Right. Now is the moment to test something. I shall take your contract. Hmm. Yes. All my camp will travel there. Don't you worry, my friend. We will definitely travel there. Hmm. Except I, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to press the escape key. And then I'm going to move my camp um, over here. There we go. Uh, let's go. Get traveling. Seems to have absolutely no amount of um, problem with us having an extra contract we do nothing with. With this many troops under one roving banner and all this dubious territory to traverse, it's to be expected that a few provisions go missing from time to time. This is not a few provisions. This is a vast, vast amount of supplies that some selfish fool has sold to locals or retrobates within my soldiery. Loss due to incompetence, failed to buy again with, or simply, or else simply frittered away and represents a for unforgivable breach of discipline. Give me the whip and we shall find the culprit. The logs will show everything eventually. I'm sure we'll catch them in the act. I think we're a whip kind of person. I think that's kind of us here. We caught the thief. I didn't say who the thief was, though. But anyway, I assume it, we just assume it's like a man at arms or something. Jocelyn is in charge of our food supplies and sheepishly reveals our positions, or our provisions, are now all but useless and being poorly stored. Patches of mold cover the bread and produce, and we have quickly used up our remaining dried food. The party grows hungry as dusk begins to fall. Not really losing that many provisions. Could do a nature provides for us. I mean, it's a 97% chance that things are good. Yeah, I'll take a 97% chance. Okay, the game lagged and I was very worried for a second there. I was like, did we just die? Anyway, fortified knowledge. The high altitude and brisk air of Malatya has been very refreshing as we traverse the local hill fort. I ogle the soldiers training below with a keen eye. Their tactics are not completely foreign to me trained in the martial arts as I am. While doing so, I am approached by a, the local captain, Aturn Nursh Say. Would you like to join in, my lady? There's a chance we can get Reckless. Now, Reckless is an interesting um, trait, because this one is very good if you are not as good as your opponent, right? Like, if you're a little bit worse than your opponent, Reckless can be really good, because it can allow you to win a fight that you otherwise wouldn't win. The problem with Reckless is that the opposite is also true, that you it can cause you, in a close fight, to, to lose a fight. 
However, if you look at the numbers, you should most of the time come out ahead, because the maximum battle roll is plus 6, while the minimum is minus 4, and assuming an even distribution, there's more positive rolls than there are negative rolls. But, it's not great. We could send our daughter there, just for uh, something to do. Hmm. You know what, daughter? I'm going to send you there. You can get Rough Terrain Expert, which is much better. She did get Rough Terrain Expert. Wonderful. Eyes in the night. Morning brings a report that a man-eating beast has struck again. Another follower, booched. Most of the cat man's corpse found next to the supply tent where the large animal left him. The sentries can't get a look at the damn thing. Whatever it is, it's got a taste for us and it seems smart enough to follow us during the day or early evenings. I cast my eyes to the carpet of hills we weave through, each breaking easy uh, each breaking easy sight to the opposite side, making it easy for an animal terror to stalk after us. Watching, waiting, hunger slowly builds for its evening meal. We tighten the watch, I shall take its head, or as long as it doesn't eat anyone important. Hmm. Depending on what it is and how large it actually is, it may be fairly easy or very, very hard and you cannot back down once you set out. We're brave, aren't we? We are indeed brave. We're also a great fighter. This is our time to shine. We shall take its head. Leopard. Okay. Not great. We can't afford to wait another night to outrun the thing. Gathering my hunting party, I intend to end this. And to do so this very morning, the beast's tracks are barely perceptible, though they seem to be feline. After nearly an hour, we crest the rise of a tall hill where the footprints simply seem to vanish. A loud growl from behind prompts me to spin on my heels, where a rabid, large leopard, face and paws still drenched in blood, awaits. The creature, its trap sprung, breaks into a sprint. Then say circle it, surround it, or have at the beast. Hmm. Okay. What are our odds? So this one is a 22% chance that the beast escapes and a 40% chance of that that we die. This one is a 95% chance we succeed, but a 5% chance it escapes, and then on that 5% chance, there's a 40% chance we die. Hmm. Well... I'm gonna fight at 1v1. Have at thee, beast. Beast falls to our numbers, and we got more prestige from that. Wonderful. Oh, what's this? Oh, the Iranian intermezzo. So, um, you know how we had a struggle over here? There is also a struggle over here. However, there is one major and a very important difference between these struggles. I played this struggle, and I haven't played this one, so I don't know what, what's involved. What? Well, what, what happens here? I assume it's the same thing. I just want to double check that there's nothing crazy going on with the phases. So we're currently in unrest. Beset by rebellions and intrigues, the caliphate crumbles. Ambitious warlords and cunning governors alike grasp at whatever power they can assert, squabbling constantly. Over time, unless the situation is resolved by an ending phase, the realm will enter a destabilization phase as desperate supporters claw back caliphal authority. Unrest phase does this. So, in a war, your supply limit is higher, and friendly territory levy reinforcement is also higher. Thanks for interlopers. Cheaper for mercenaries if you're an interloper. You get more advantage when leading your own armies, and you get a larger levy size, which doesn't affect us. And garrison size also doesn't affect us, as we have neither. Uh, culture effects, that doesn't mean anything for us. Faith doesn't mean anything for us. Other effects. Building construction time, I don't even know if that affects the domicile, because I assume that's different, because buildings are specifically buildings and holdings. Danger plus 25 will affect us. Uh, disillusion faction is less common, but claimant factions are more common, doesn't really affect us, and control decline when at war also doesn't affect us at all. Okay, cool. That's all I really need to know. I don't need to know anything else about this because uh, we are not a real member of this struggle. We are simply an interloper because we've appeared here. Like We are in the area of the struggle, but we are not actually part of the struggle. Trait gained. You gained Detractor of the Caliphate trait. Oh, we have something for this. 
Bloody civil strife embroils the once unassailable nun of. I assume that's meant to be a title. The ruling family murder and war with one another, competing to usurp the caliphate. Iraq reels whilst beyond the eastern mountains, Persian frontier lords take advantage of the situation to assert their independence, build empires of their own from Baghdad's rubble. With the Masters of Islam locked in perpetual crisis, this is an opportunity like no other for the von Ursling House to become masters of our own fate and carve our name into the annals of history. The region is currently in a stage of unrest, yes. Okay, may God be with me. So what does that um, trait mean? The Tractor of the Caliphate unlocks the Ferment Revolt Interaction. Unlocks the Request Incursion Interaction. Unlocks Decision to Search for a New Faith. Un opinion of Detractor of the Caliphate characters up. Opinions of Supporter of the Caliphal Authority characters minus 30. So this is due to us being Orthodox. I see. It's interesting they give you a trait instead of it being an effect that applies to your faith. Huh. Interesting. I guess it's so you can easily see it and you can be like, ah... This is why XYZ is happening, and then when you leave, maybe it changes, or maybe you get to keep this forever. Right? Like, maybe you just need to go into the area and you get to keep it. I don't know why I was looking for the rough gemstone here, but uh, I was just kind of like, why do I have a new artifact But it's the one that we picked up for this quest? Right, well, I don't need to worry about this currently. Let's unpause and speed 5. Travel. Okay. Religious head um, established. The Zeng... Zengyi masters have proclaimed um, Zhuang, Zhuang Zhong as um, the leader of their religion. Okay, cool. And now we are here. We get learning lifestyle experience and even more. So you get 800 learning lifestyle experience for visiting this place. That's a lot. Hmm. Um, you have done well, adventurer. You may remain and enjoy the pleasures of Samsara. Cool. I might just do that for a little bit. Plus, we get to learning perks. So, night effectiveness per learning skill. That would give us 10% night effectiveness and lower enemy defensive advantage. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll keep going down that path for now. Cool, we're going to leave this a little bit longer. To see if there's any penalties. Like, what? what is the time limit? And then this one. So 98% war score, you're winning. The employer is winning with 98% war score. So there must be somebody else in your war. No, you just happen to be winning with 98 because they are taking war score and they're not sieging quick enough. Now, is that the army you're against or is that the arm or is that actually you? Uh, let me see here. So that is him. So he's about to finish the siege in five months, but he'll win through ticking war score before then. These guys are sieging, but they're not going to siege in time. So there's no point to join this one, as we literally cannot help. But what's this? I don't know if we've seen this one. Raid for captives. Oh, we saw this one once, but we never did it, because we weren't in a position to do this. So you want me to raid for captives somewhere. Okay. Um... That's fine. Who do you want me to attack? Atabeg um, Ahmad. Okay. So where are you? so you're here and you have 300 troops. You have an ally, the Tulanid Sultanate. They have 1.8k, but they're currently in their own. Pro they have their own problems. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. I'll, I'll take your contract. <laughs> Greetings, adventurer. Many are the roads of this world and treacherous. If your work for Shah Razur, my liege would pay well for your expertise. His sworn enemy, the vile Atabeg Ahmad of, Tur of Turkey, has been a menace lately. Uh, my liege would like me to take him down a notch by capturing his men. I will do this. Although I don't entirely know how I'm going to... I guess I'm just going to win the war. By going over here and beating you up. That is my plan. The enemy uh, joined the war, but that's okay. Also, let me just check something here. Yeah, you're in the other war as well, so, like, there's nothing for us to do here because his troops are going to be down in this area, so it doesn't bother me. Right. Uh, oh, ruins. Yes, every time we go into the ruins. We got nothing. Oh. Well, at least it lowered our stress. Okay. Heading in here. Can we see when we took this, by the way? 
we cannot see when we took this. Okay. Cool. That's fine. Well, this is a pretty easy war. We have siege units and we're sieging. Alright. Beans to an end. I sit by the sutler's tent, letting the sounds and smells of the camp watch over me. It's a different it's different from a life within the safe walls of the palace, so very different. The freedom is easy to enjoy. No obligations, no counselors yapping, no dignitaries to entertain. None of the downsides of the trappings of power. Yet these freedoms are dearly purchased. The constant scraping for survival wears thin. Increasingly, every night I yearn for a proper bed. So we can get a lust for land for 35 years if we wanted to. I enjoy the quiet life, or best to keep my options open. We could be a flexible leader off of this. Let's try and be a flexible leader. It gets us some provisions as well. Aha! We got it! Wonderful. So this means that enemy defensive advantage goes down by 50%. Minimum roll in battle is plus 2 in mountains and in deserts. But I just realized something about that. Does that mean that enemy defensive advantage is 0? That can't be right. Maybe it's only from things that you get for defending. But... That seems really good. I mean, obviously, they could have a positive that raises it up, but... Yeah. Oh, no! Archimbod is dead. He's our master of arms. Or did he die? Being ill. Well, that would do it. Um... Well, he's been with us a while. Picked him back up and We picked him up in France. Remember France? That was a while ago. Well, I guess our new uh, Master of Arms... Oh, this guy's also not feeling too good. I guess our new Master of Arms is going to be Chrysanthos. Uh, Chris... Chrysanthos. Yeah, let's put him in charge. Okay. Not ideal. New Marshal perk. Hmm. Organized March. Yes, because we want to get to hit and run. It's going to be the next big boost for us. Wonderful. Continue uh, teaching. Oh, they're gonna attack me? Oh, please do. I want to see how this goes. So, they have some men at arms, which are being countered by our Kony. However, they are countering our uh, Abadar. Uh, Abadrar. Uh, they're friendly fatal casualties thing there, but they don't have any defensive advantage stuff. So, if I hover. Where do I hover? Here? Their advantage. Are we defending? We're, atta uh, we're attacking, right? Yeah, so they get to keep their advantage. So what this must mean is if they have a defensive advantage bonus, it would lower it to zero. Should they have a defensive advantage bonus here? Now that's the question. Drylands does not give any defensive advantage, so I don't think they would have any bonus here by default. So I don't think it's as good as it initially seemed, but anyway, um, as you'll see in a second, that will not matter. Because, um, yeah, they're all dead. That was uh, 0 for 737. Nice. Also, how close are... Oh, we're, we're going to hit Exalted Amongst Men from this. Wonderful. Okay, Rough Gemstone has low durability. Maybe that's your timer on the artifact, whether it's still got durability on it. I wonder what happens if you your artifact's destroyed on the way there. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll find out. 100% war score. We're going to enforce our demands. This gets us a bunch of prestige. And it uh, gives us some prisoners. I think it gets us prestige. Anyway, enforce demands. Um, Your staunch efforts in my war are greatly appreciated. Enjoy your well-earned gold, my good woman. Better not ask what he will do with them. Okay, so they're transferred to his prison. So be it. That's it. It actually didn't give us any prestige. It would have given our allies prestige, but we don't have any allies in it, obviously. Um, you can complete this. Oh, really? Can I? Hmm. That's interesting. Get my provisions. Um, what's this one? Rescue a fair subject? Sure, we'll do that. You give me some prestige? I do like that you're giving me prestige, because I do need prestige. I'll take it only because I need prestige right now. Level of devotion to our faith has gone up. Wonderful. We are now a paragon of virtue. Gives us orthodox clergy opinion. Is it weird that this piety value doesn't reset when you change religion? Yes. But anyway. Um, so these two people are arguing about uh, who's 
spot it is. Well, you know what? Even though it's our daughter, I'm going to let them fight between themselves because that's what we always do. We, we don't care whose spot um, the camp tent is in. Not our problem. I'm going to try something that we tried before, but I'm going to try this again. Let's go for a 1-4. Um, Let's see how this feels. Also invite. So, phase is 10 days per phase. Minimum speed is 10, so we're hitting the minimum. So, actually, we probably should have gone for a... Um, yeah, we should have gone for a balanced one because we're hitting the minimum. Okay. I don't see why you wouldn't always go for balanced then. Maybe if you have specific setups, you would like you would want to go for one or the other, but for us it doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Anyway, because we were hitting ten, I think with um it anyway with balanced. I might be wrong though. But yeah, you see on this one we now have to wait even longer because we have to wait for it to get to like uh, twenty before we can do this. Theo has a nickname. He is now Pio the Timid. Also, while we're looking at people in our camp, let me just have a look. Oh, everybody's a follower of us right now. And the person we're swaying does have the lowest opinion of us. Okay, that's cool. We're at 10, 11, 12. Nothing we need to do there. Another four to go. Travails of a coup. Uh, we've done this one many times. This is just they would like some more provisions. We'll choose the top one. We've got some provisions. Wonderful. We're now at 20. Now going to execute the scheme at 20. This is an 84% success chance. So we've got lower success and it took longer. But we did succeed. Fantastic. We have saved Tadia. Now, do we want Tadia to join us? And say we've got a long path ahead of us. Innocent rescued and we get a bunch of bonuses. Or we do not have to part ways. I'm, ha I'm happy. I'm happy to leave her here. I don't think we need to worry about that for now. Right. We shall head back to camp. A level of fame is now um, the highest, isn't it? Exalt oh no, Exalted Monk's Men is not the highest. I forgot, there is Legendary Figure above it. Is that the one that we need? So this one allows you to get a, b a bunch of new stuff. So you adventure kingdom invasions. You can purchase land for duchies. Uh, you can hire as mercenaries county and duchy rewards. Okay, so you can get higher rewards for these things. These realm scheme for kingdoms and below. Request invasion sponsorship. Sponsorship interaction. Okay. Cool. Uh oh. Knight of the Heart. Yeah, so it was Exalted Monk's Men we needed for this, though. Wonderful. So we can become a knight errant. It is said that a mysterious knight comes in a heart-driven boat to rescue those in danger. A little boat of pearly sheen, and a stately knight that sat therein. Uh, so Knight Errant. So it only gets you the very first level of it, but you get two more Knights and you get Knight Effectiveness per Prowess, uh, which gives us 27 extra Knight Effectiveness right now. Uh, and Glory Hound Vassal Opinion, which doesn't matter. Let me just check here. So, Prowess per level of Fame, number of Knights, and then Size of Men at Arms. And then the next level is that again, but even better. Wow, because previous levels apply. That's the important thing on these. So this isn't it going from 1 to 2, this is it going from 1 to 3. Like, one instead of going from 1 to 2 extra knights, it's 1 to 3 extra knights. And, in prowess, it's not you going from 1 prowess per level of fame to 2. It, you're now getting 3 prowess per level of fame. Our level of fame is like 4 right now, so if we were to get up here, I don't know how you do it, I assume you just keep doing contracts. But if we were to get up there, we would gain 12 prowess um, immediately. Which is pretty good because remember, prowess then it goes directly into night effectiveness. That's great. You also gain the golden coat of the heart armor type artifact and the knight of the heart legend seed and house Ursling gains swan song. Which gives monthly prestige per knight, accolade glory gain plus 10% and has to trait experience. So you get a lot more prestige and you are a lot you get a lot more accolade glory, which is good. So the accolades are for your acclaimed knights, which are a mechanic which uh, you get uh, when you're landed. And it means that you can get a bunch of bonuses. And Hastlutter trait experience go going up is great because one of the good ways of gaining accolade glory is to... Um, 
Well, unless this means I'm assuming this is accolade glory gain for your for your knights, but maybe it's for you. If it's for you, it's less good. If it's for your knights, then the way I think this is implying that you should do things is you should um like you should hold tournaments, which then gets you the Hast Looter tournament stuff, and your knights are then gaining glory at the tournament, which is then getting them leveled up. However, I've realized this could be meaning for you. And it could be if you're a count or something and you're an acclaimed knight while being an account, but there's not really a lot you can do to make that happen. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter because we're going to take it anyway. Yes. Um, so we get a legend seed, we get the golden coat of, of the heart, and we become a knight errant. The best of her kind. The knight of the heart. The most noble of her kind. Lanfranco's voice startles me. I've been looking everywhere for you. They are telling senseless stories about you in the camp. He lets out a chuckle. They say you once crossed a bridge made of swords, that you entered an enchanted forest where you rescued a fair man, that a marvelous heart gave you a miraculous coat. He, si he signals a servant to bring over a pearled armor, a gift from all those that you have helped. They can say, and I still not have not helped enough, which gets us valiant knight. Okay. So that makes defense of our innocent the top priority. So if we had these vassals, we get these bonuses, but we have no vassals, obviously. Or I can offer numerous types of help. Uh, romance schemes can well be greatly increased. Oh, I see. I can offer numerous wink types of help. That's how I think it was implying you could say that, and that gets you courteous now, which gives us attraction op uh, opinion. You know the thing about attraction opinion? It doesn't apply to us because we're too old. So we'll take Valiant Knight. I've still not helped enough. Wonderful. We now have a legend and we have armor. So an armor adorned with a floral motif. It is said that the bearer must never reveal their name. It gives us prowess, which by the way, remember, prowess gives you knight effectiveness. 6% knight effectiveness. Tyranny loss uh, goes down, which doesn't matter. Uh, or sorry, it... Um, it means that you would lose tyranny more quickly and tyranny is bad, so that's what that's saying, but that doesn't matter because we have none. Attraction opinion doesn't apply, and then courtier and guest opinion up 50. Um, I assume that doesn't apply to your knights, although we'll need to have a look at this here. Uh, I can also, in here, give my heir here. Swavian male. Also, I realized she didn't convert. Huh. Okay. Uh, now, I want to just check a follower in here. So, do you gain any bonus because of our heart uh, armor? Yes. Okay, so courtiers and guests apply to your followers. So, this basically means that while you have this, you're going to be in steadfast pretty much all of the time because you're getting an extra plus 15. Also, knight effectiveness is now 97 from this. That is incredible. Okay, so what is our knight effectiveness? It's 345. Wow, that's um, that's a reasonable amount. Yeah, that means our knights are absolutely destroying people. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so now we've got that. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we want to do with that. I guess we can keep working towards the next level. Um, I guess we also want to do the legend as well if we can. Um, just seeing what else we've got in here. So, what other ones could we do? Great Conqueror. You have at least 4,000 soldiers. Well, we don't have that, so we're not going to get that. Champion of the Baranus Culture. I could actually do this if we have the same culture as the area that we're in. That would get us a claim on the duchy and it would start us a war. Ah, so this is like being a peasant uh, leader and you then champion your... your um, Champion yourself to take control of the land. I see. If you fulfill at least three of these, you'll get the duchy peacefully. If you have a highborn spouse of the same culture, you have the same faith. Wait, Nestorian faith? Why is it Nestorian in particular? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Is that, oh wait, is that the faith of the county I'm in? Uh, yes. Okay, so. Same culture spouse is the county you're in. Same faith is the county you're in. A weak hook on the person you've declared a war on. You're a friend of the person you've declared a war on. Uh, you are a higher level of fame than the person you declared a war on. That's actually really easy to do. 
Yeah. That is actually incredibly easy to do. Interesting. The travels. So we've actually done this as well. Uh, you will unlock new lifestyle perks or create a book artifact that will increase the lifestyle experience for future holders. So every 12 visited points of interest up to 60 will increase the rewards. So we have the max reward that we can get from this. We just need 500 gold and 1,500 prestige. That, that's definitely something we can do. Ascension. What's, what's this one do? We're able to convert counties you visit to orthodoxy. You have to go to two holy sites. Uh, or be a theologian. And your current location must be an orthodox holy site ruled by an orthodox top liege. Which means it would have to be um, back in the Byzantine Empire. Found a holding. We don't need to do that. But actually this one we have all the requirements for as well. And then levy the outcasts. We have none of this because we're not gallows bait. Okay. Interesting. Um, let's close this for now. Also, actually, while we're in here, I should have that ticked. I just saw that we have it and we're not, we're not actually doing it. Why should I have this ticked? Well, because train for a tournament is objectively just a good um, event. Uh, the worst that happens is nothing happens, I think. Like, and the best that happens is you can gain strong. We already have strong. And then the other two options are you gain one prowess forever. So every 10 years, you can just gain a prowess. It's pretty good, right? It's just worth doing. And all you have to do is be within range of a tournament. In fact, I don't think you even have to have a tournament that you can actually physically get to in time. There just has to be a tournament going on that it will tell you about. So within a certain distance. This really has no limit, huh? This ongoing contract. Huh. Anyway... We've now done the, what we did there. Um, let's gather some provisions. It was also suggested we might be better off gathering provisions not in um, castles. That's fair. Or nothing. Oh, I never did the legend. Yeah. So the Knight of the Heart is a, a heroic legend. And they saw a snow white animal come drawing down the tide, a little boat of pearly sheen, a stately knight that sat therein and seemed its course to guide. It's going to cost me 400 to create. Now, I did make legends more expensive. That was one thing I very specifically did when I set up the game rules. Why? Well, because in my previous game, we had legends basically on spawn, right? Like, legend appeared, we, com we waited five years, we completed the legend. The cost of it didn't matter at all to us because it was so minuscule. So I made them all cost just a little, well, no, a lot more. So legends are actually rare. So if a legend appears, we can be like, oh, cool, a legend, rather than, ah, it's another system that's going to pop up every two seconds with a new legend. So, um, yeah. There has currently been no legends, probably because the AI cannot afford legends currently. Uh, we also, by the way, just in case you're wondering, could not afford legends currently because it's eight per month. That we need for this and we are currently earning 0 0.9 per month that's just that won't work especially if a creation cost of 400 yeah and that's eight per month for five years so you're talking 80 96 a year times by five so you're talking uh, why am i doing this in my head on the video um 400 80 gold just from the promoting cost not including the cost of upgrading which is going to be at least 400 I, can, I have no idea how much the cost of upgrading is but assume that's 400 right so it's going to be 800 because you have to upgrade twice if you want the top reward I guess you don't have to go for the top reward but we'll assume that uh, so that's 1280 1280 like, uh, just from the upgrading and the promoting, not including the 400 that up front, which then means it's like 1,680. I think I probably got the numbers wrong. I have a strong feeling I make, missed them somewhere, but you get the point, right? We're not earning that much money. Like, we, we, we are not bringing in that much. We might be over, like, the time if we really put the effort in, but yeah, no. 
Anyway, uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, anyway, so we'll leave the legend for now. Somebody else maybe can pick it up in the future. Uh, visit the castle holding. Let's do that. We shall mingle with the locals at the tavern. I will hear a story. The story will give us some Hastludor trait experience. Wonderful. We see a stallion in the corner. Okay. Well, let's see who this is. Well, well. I am intently observing the stallion sitting himself down at a nearby table. Tavern owner called him Azam, didn't she? He looks puzzled as I approach him, possibly because my internal turmoil is as clear uh, as day on my face. Why would this bother me? I'm Mistress Osterhield of the Stalwart Outlaws, damn it. Okay. I can buy him some. I am buy him a mug of Violet Sharba. He joins our camp. I can try and seduce him. Or I can try and really seduce him if I had the seductress trait. I might just pay him the 11 gold, honestly. This guy was very happy I paid him 11 gold. Who's for recruitment? We have. A uh, person who's about to die. Okay. There we go. We have a person with no stats. And we have... A person with an odd stat distribution who does have 12 prowess, so it's kind of okay. Um, I want to pay 81 for him, no. Let's have a look at the castle. So, we have Ghazi here. And we have... Abd al... Jalil. I don't need either of them. Training grounds. We can pay 90 to increase our prowess by one. Now, our prowess is decreasing by one a year. So, it is... Pro Actually, that's more than one a year, right? Because it was lowering since we were 50. It's up once every... No, that's more often than once every two years. Anyway, it might be worth gaining some prowess because that will start to counteract the fact that we're losing some from old age. Let's do that. Right. Uh, I'm done. Yes, I'm done here. Wonderful. Right. Um, there's something else I want to check. Let's take... Light Corruption? No. Instructor of Night? Let's take Instructor of Night. So I just want to see if we take this trait, or this uh, contract. No, this isn't what I'm, I'm thinking of. I'm looking for the one that's like... Um, I'm trying to remember what it is now. The, the one where you have to sit and wait for this to go around. Like one of those ones. Uh, I'm wondering whether we can take those while also taking transport quests. Thereby being able to not waste our time. Hmm. Maybe. Let, let's actually go back in here. There's one thing we didn't do. Town Crier. Treasure map contract. I don't think we've done a treasure map contract. Bring an old and withered adventurer to find their final treasure. Sure. A treasure map contract. Okay. Turns out uh, I'm more interested in the treasure map contract. Treasure of a lifetime. The retired treasure hunter... Unal War needs help locating one final elusive horde. This will remain valid as long as you have the treasure map in your possession. Okay, take contract. Unawar walks up to me and pats my shoulder. Such a good lass. I truly appreciate your aid in this one final excursion. She hands over a tattered treasure map, wrinkles around her eyes, softening, and she smiles. It may not look like much, but I've rested, wrestled with Satan himself to obtain this. Treat it with care. Pausing for a moment to let the words sink in, the old woman then cackles. Ah, whenever you're ready, we've got a treasure to dig up. Okay, she's only ten years older than us, but that's okay. You can head out. Well, this will open the excavate treasure decision, or I'll get to it soon. Alright, let's head out. Start travel to Firun, located in the county of Firun. Which is where? Ah, it's miles away. Alright, well, organized travel. I'm getting old and my body is failing. Find this elusive treasure and bring it back to me. My time is running short. What a letter. Travel with camp or without camp? Let's go with camp? Yeah, although we kind of want to go the other way, don't we? Because we want to go through these, I'd assume. 
And yeah, we'll go through Baghdad. Let's see if we get the uh, sightseeing event. We didn't get the sightseeing event going the other way, so. Let's go here, then into here. Then into here. Yeah, then it loops us around in this way. Then I want to go to Jerusalem. Yeah, perfect. That seems good to me. Okay, start traveling. It's going to cost us 4,000 provisions, but that's okay. Alright, let's go. Also at speed 5, not speed 1. Tomb Raiders. Turning a bend on the path, we come across a group of people covered in dust emerging from what must have been an impressive tomb. They hoist burlap sacks that jingle and jangle, weighed down by the trinkets they have dunk out of the ancient building. Times are hard, dear Duchess. Our families must be fed, and we are not doing harm to anyone among the living. The leader looks up at us with some trepidation. He clearly realizes this does not look good for them. So we can uh, get punished to destitute for 10 years. Lowering popular opinion, which I don't care about at all, because we have no popular opinion. Vassal opinion, which I also don't care about. And then control growth, which I don't care about. I imprison this guy. Okay. Or I can say we deserve our, our cut. Or I can say they're desperate, I'll reimburse the, uh, them to return the loot. Your traveling companion would help us examine the loot. Oh. Uh, I'll reimburse them to return the loot. I could forgive them. That doesn't do us anything either. I'm going to imprison them. Okay. Person I've imprisoned. Now what am I going to do with you? Yeah, give me a hook and you can leave, I guess. Or I could just execute you. Well, I'll just execute you on the way past. Right. Night attack. It's night when the attackers fall on our perimeter. A motley flash of glinting armor and flashing weapons lit only by a distant firelight. If they're wearing any colors, they're not, they're not visible. But their intent is clear enough all the same. Move us from Samara, dead or alive. Camp is not without defenders, though. And with the cry of outrage, we prepare to push back this local scourge. So we can counterattack. Into the fray I go. Hide from the chaos. Oh, I'm definitely going to go into the fray. 100%. Successful rampage. We visited the House of Wisdom, getting his martial lifestyle experience. And we got some other stuff. Uh, he knows us what we didn't get. A sightseeing event. Okay. Pounding hooves. Ugh, my head. Moans. Um, Anastasios, as he rides alongside me. I raise an eyebrow in silent inquiry as at the man's exclamation. Response, Anastasios simply slumps across his horse, whimpering and clutching at his temples. Clearly someone had a good night last night. Slow down, laugh at his predicament, kick his horse into gear, to trot on, leaving him to his misery. We'll leave him to his misery. With some learning lifestyle experience. Adventurer landed. Ooh. This guy was landed after negotiation with Emir Muhammad Ibn Dulaf. Oh, so he's he got himself a whole duchy. Well done him. Okay. I am wondering if you play as a landed character, whether you just constantly get adventurous saying, can I have some land? I'll pay you for some land. Do you have any land that I can buy? Oh yeah, I wanted to try something. Uh, we'll wait a second for this. Um, I bask in the desert sun, enjoying but a moment's peace in this hectic lifestyle I've chosen for myself. But then the sound of snapping wood, the scream and a splash of water brings my heart to a sink. I see my bodyguard Philippe standing, or stood beside the soggy splintered remains of our water barrel. Apparently he had dropped it onto some sharp rocks while unloading and now the last of our water supplies sink deep into the road. Must find more. Get him to find more. Made local caravan so we'll have to survive without. And we'll get him to find some more. He failed. Okay. What I wanted to see is, we've got a stand with us contract here, right? Can I take this here and raise our troops in this province? Uh, so you're in a war against the tyranny against Emir uh, Fayez. This is Sheik Ali. So you got 194 troops, okay. Uh, but your ally has 1,000. You're against 600, so you're gonna win. Who's sieging this? So that's the Euphorid one. And you're attacking in a war against... Yeah, so you are the ally, right? Yes, yeah, so you're the ally in this war. So who needs help? So contractor is Sheik Ali. Who's this guy? Okay. 
That makes sense. Um, and then what land is... Yeah, what land is... So this guy holds two bits of land. I see. So we could help go over there and siege, and that will actually get us something. Yeah, so this isn't a worthless contract. Cannot take it while traveling. Of course. Okay. Uh, that was foolish of me. I guess we could stop traveling, take it, and then re-travel. Yeah, probably. Right? So, like, I was just thinking, if I stop my travel here, so abort travel, then take the contract. Wait, can I support either side? No, wait, this is support the faction. But this faction is already fired, right? Wait, because this is Shikali. Is this not, not your faction? No, it's a war against the tyranny. So you have a separate faction we could support. So we could support your faction and then be in this... Okay, that's confusing. I'm going to join your war. Right. I shall aid him. Right, and then we can move our camp to where we need to go for this one. Which is the evacuate treasure... Or excavate treasure one. Travel with camp down here. Yeah. But I can raise my troops here. Wonderful. Okay, that's all I wanted to check. And we're going to head up here and siege. Okay, also, wait, we can't lead because we're traveling. Yes, yeah, so we have no knights if we do this. That's the negative. Okay. But if we don't need a knight, then we're fine. High tier stand with us from the Basilius? Oh my lord, what's happened, Basilius? Where's your stand with us as well? Don't know. Um, let's just have a look at this for a second. Uh, yeah, so you're asking us to join your... This one. This Liberty War. Okay. You're gonna win your attacking war, so we'd have to join this one. Wow. Okay, how many people are on each side? 6,000 versus 7,900. I kind of want in, but uh, we'll wait until uh, we've, we've got to our location. And we finish this other one. Reflecting on God. I'm sitting and meditating on the final points of orthodoxy. I cannot help but to think back to when I traveled to Vaticano for my very first pilgrimage. This trip is far from the quotidian comforts of my life as a duchess, but the relief I felt upon arriving at Vaticano made it worth all the trouble. Although that was a pilgrimage while we were a different religion, but let's not worry about that. A bird in the hand. We arrive in... in Firun, countryside, early afternoon and begin looking for clues as to where the marker on the treasure map might point. Walking about the desert mountains, I notice a well-hidden cavity in a rock cliff. It leads to a small cave. Inside of the grotto, seemingly long forgotten, is home to scattered objects. Hefting what looks to be an ancient and surprisingly heavy urn, I discover a respectable cache of gold coins within. Being keeper or a splendid news for Guanwar. I'll say splendid news. It's worth two in the bush. Uh, Unawar can barely contain her excitement as I return to her tent. Gold, you say? How is that for one final treasure? A twinge of melancholy, doubtlessly at the thought of an adventurer's, or adventurer's end, flits across her face as she concludes this affair. I'm grateful for this golden windfall, dutifully delivered. Go with my thanks. Pleasure doing business with you. We get provisions, which is quite nice. They're worth a reasonable amount as well. And then gold as well. We complete the treasure hunting contract. Nice. Okay, six months left on the siege. I guess we'll just sit here and wait. Um, right, yes, this is the one where the person is like, I need some supplies, but we have to say no, go ask for permission. And then he gave us permission. Wonderful. Train for a tournament. Yes, fantastic. Right, so, this train for a tournament event, every single time it's exactly the same. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Oh, every knight also does it? I didn't realize every knight did it as well. So every knight can get prowess on a 39% chance. Um, and then we can get a bunch of prowess. There is actually negative. There's wounded. But it's a prowess challenge. So if you have prowess, then this is easy. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty good. We have two high tier contracts available with us. A fight corruption high tier. Ooh. And we're right here as well, actually. We're already on the location. So I could take this, and we can do um, the war at the same time. Space 792? I mean, it probably won't. It'll probably pay 400, but still. Is this the one that means that we have to travel to County still? It is. We could do that. I might do that after this one, though. 
Yeah, let's do that after the siege. Assuming it's still there. I hope it will be. Oh yeah, we have a new perk in here as well. On the road makes moving domicile quicker. Um, let's see how it's done. Visiting a point of interest it gets us gold. That seems like a thing you get earlier. Um, hmm. On the road seems good. I like the travel speed. Oh, and then the martial perk, we take hit and run. Makes us even stronger. Great. Uh, and we're going to get the last bit of war score for this one. Religious convictions. Uh, can I get him to support me here? I don't care. I'll just get 30 opinion and then he'll like me at max, right? Yeah, he likes me at max. Okay. Who's next? Nobody. Wonderful. Right. Finish our siege. There we go. Got it. 100% war score. You want to end your war? Nice. That gets us 322 gold and 50 piety. We are extremely rich. Hey, you know what it's time for? It's time for us to not disband our troops, but instead to immediately just join the Byzantine Empire's uh, war. Yes. I shall aid him. He is losing, but I shall aid him. Why is he losing? Attacker controls war target. No bit of land is sieged. That's why they're losing. So the moment this finishes, that taking war score will go away. And then I'm also going to take the fight corruption one as well. Although I may leave that until next time. Just figuring out where we want to go. If also, wait, have they sieged Constantinople? They have. Which means we could go over there and start sieging it. That's probably worth quite a lot of war score, right? Uh, yeah, it's worth 10% for having the capital. Okay, but it's only worth 4% by itself. I guess because it's only one holding. So, like, it's not worth as much. So if we have a look at this. This is how war score is built up, by the way. So if we have a look at this. This one's got five holdings underneath um, the county. Therefore, this one is worth five times the base war score. Whatever the base war score is. This one has a singular holding under a county. So it's worth the base war score. So you can see this here. This is five times that. It makes sense when you look at it like that. It doesn't make sense when you realize that this is literally Constantinople and these are like some farms, but I mean, you know, that's the way it works. So what were we going to do about it? Uh, we probably do want to go and take their capital back. Hmm. I'm tempted to just click that in. We could also go fight. Might be worth going and fighting. Yeah, maybe we want to head over here and fight. Although, yeah. If we take this contract, then we're not going to be able to go and fight because we're not going to be able to be in charge of our army. But maybe, hmm, maybe we'll figure that out next time. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.